I got the broadcast over the radio, uh, the last number, and I immediately wrote it down, and then I set up a block where I thought they might be coming out. And we set up at uh, Meister Hutchins and play and run. And it, it was, I sit there about five minutes, and uh, then I saw this vehicle approaching, and immediately I spotted the last one. So I waited until he got on past, uh, because I was by myself at the time, and I knew I might not be able to apprehend him by myself. So I waited and radioed for help. By that time we were at the Dairy Queen. We circled around the Dairy Queen and parked in front of Massey's Food Store. And as soon as we parked, they parked in front of Massey's Food Store. I had about five squads, and we were out on top of them. They are, there are two factions in South America. There are the government and there are the Tupamaros. And neither faction has given an inch. My husband is between the two. He's an innocent victim. He's a pawn. Neither side wants to give in. The Tupamaros have demanded a publication of a manifesto, a proclamation. The government says no.
Herb, you were so much a part of the ball club that uh, about whom we heard uh, the word togetherness, and we've heard that applied to the Cowboys here in the last two or three weeks. Have you begun to sense anything uh, similar to what you had in Green Bay? Well, there's no doubt about it, Vern. Uh, the last four or five weeks, I've uh, really sensed the same type of thing that we had going for us up in Green Bay, and that being confidence in each other and uh, just working together as a team. What brings it about, especially after uh, the humiliation of the loss to St. Louis? I think that has a lot to do with it. You know, I, we were humiliated by Minnesota and St. Louis. And I think uh, each person went home and sat down and said to himself, well, if I do the best job that I'm capable of doing, maybe my teammates will see it and they'll follow and pick up too. And uh, that's the main thing. It's very simple. If you're speeding, as you drive by the installation where Orbis is situated, uh, then your photograph is taken by the device. Uh, not only does the camera uh, catch uh, the person driving the car, but very importantly, uh, it uh, reproduces the license plate. Uh, everyone seated in the uh, front seat is visible to the camera. And uh, as a result, we would be able to trace uh, the driver of the car or the owner of the car, uh, should that ownership be different. But uh, this will allow us then to immediately contact that driver and uh, uh, tell him of his uh, excessive speed and our concern about that fact. Do you issue a citation to the driver? We don't plan to issue citations initially along Highway 303. Uh, we uh, will, however, in the case of flagrant violations, call this to the attention of the driver. Certainly, if there is a, uh, a continuation of speeding by the same driver day after day, then we'll talk to him. The purpose of a joint airport zoning board is to set up a legal entity according to existing state law to adopt regulations to govern the creation or establishment of airport hazards within an airport hazard area surrounding an airport. You said the word airport hazards. What do these words mean? Airport hazard means any structure or tree or use of land which obstructs the airspace required for the flight of aircraft or which obstructs or interferes with the control or tracking and our data acquisition in the landing and taking off of flights at an airport. Union Station hasn't changed a great deal. The ticket counter, the wooden benches, the signs on the wall, and even the last departure schedule are still there. But Union Station, like so many others across the country, is closed. Many others are closing almost daily. The reason being, the railroads say they cannot operate passenger service profitably. The Penn Central is a good example of that. Others say they are operating at a loss and they can't go on. Well, there's a proposition now before the Congress for the government to more or less take over passenger service. Secretary of Transportation John A. Volpe has proposed uh, 16 different rail passenger routes crisscrossing the country over which scheduled passenger trains would be operated by the National Rail Passenger Service Corporation, which has been authorized by public law. Now, Mr. Volpe says that all the railroads of the nation will be invited to participate in this program. He says it is to establish a viable rail passenger system which can be modernized and expanded in accordance with the need and prevent the abandonment of passenger lines in the United States. Now, you'll notice that this particular map has a line from Chicago to Houston. It doesn't mention the city of Dallas, but the Dallas Chamber of Commerce wants to be mentioned. 
They want Dallas included on that southern route from Chicago to Houston. Now, how would it be accomplished? Of course, the Dallas Chamber of Commerce says that if the rail is going to run from Chicago to Houston, then it certainly ought to run through Dallas. Take a look at this plan. Instead of taking the route on the right side through St. Louis, the Dallas Chamber of Commerce would like to see it come down the left line, that is through Kansas City and on to Dallas. Now there's one problem with that. The Santa Fe is currently running a passenger run from Chicago to Houston, but it is via Gainesville and Fort Worth. That problem would have to be overcome before it could come on into Dallas as it used to in the old days. Then there are other problems that are developing dissatisfaction by congressmen who feel that their state or their particular district is being left out. Texas congressmen like Jake Pickle, Robert White, and others are unhappy about the lack of a trans-southwest route in Mr. Volpe's plan. Take a look at this slide, for instance. You notice the Washington to St. Louis route drops on down to Dallas and then goes west to Los Angeles. It would be nice if they could have that, but then why can't then Mr. Magnuson of Washington State have a north-south route up along the west coast? And if Mr. Magnuson can have that, why can't every senator or representative or chamber of commerce have every route they've always had? Well, it's the problem. The present routes are all going broke. Let's go back to what Mr. Volpe says in the first place. What we have to do is start all over with the very basics and then open up new routes as demands require. What about these trains? Will they ever run through Dallas Union Station again? Well, the Dallas Chamber of Commerce would certainly like to see it happen, but economically, well, it really isn't feasible. This building needs a half million dollars work done on it to put it back into condition. Maybe someday you'll see the trains run through Dallas again, but I suggest it will be at a smaller, newer, more economically constructed substation somewhere else in the city. You just may see passenger service through this city again, and if you do, will you use it? This is Jim Mitchell, Channel 8 News. But this train, like so many passenger trains today, it just won't move. <laughs>